Hello everyone, in this video I would like to talk about stack RF power amplifiers. In recent times we have noticed that a lot of literature has emerged discussing stack RF power amplifiers suitable for microwave and millimeter wave frequencies. So I will talk about why this concept which is in fact a very old concept has suddenly emerged and what exactly are stacked RF power amplifiers and we go detail into it's relevant theory only so that as a designer you will understand how to optimize and how to understand these amplifiers correctly. So before going further into detail of this amplifier we will start with a base, basic amplifier which is a common gate amplifier because the common gate amplifiers form the foundation of stack power amplifiers which we see in this uh, microwave transaction papers sometimes a person can think they are very complicated but in fact the basic concept lies in the common gate amplifier so if you understand the common gate amplifier well you will understand the stacked amplifier also very well so let's start with the common gate amplifier we all know what a common gate amplifier is common gate amplifier is one of the three types of amplifier there is common source and common drain in common gate we give the input at the source and take the output from the drain that's it and the gate is held uh, without an rf signal it is just dc biased the one of the important feature of common gate amplifier and it's also very obvious and from basic electronics that it has a very uh, it has a low input impedance so the input impedance looking into the source is 1 over gm it means that by controlling the gm of the device we can manipulate the input impedance and uh, this is again very important property of common gate amplifier because this property is used in impedance matching this is one of the very fundamental property the other property of common gate amplifier is the fact that it only gives uh, it has a very good it has a very good uh, let's say power gain of course as com uh, compared to common source it has less power gain but still it is a very good power gain the reason is uh, the the what, what, what should I say the same current which is appearing in the drain comes through the source so that's the first property right so the and the second property is it only do amplification of the voltage right so the uh, the product which is the, the power which is a product of current and voltage is v into i so the current is constant and the amplification is got from the voltage gain uh, just to recap common source has the both current and power gain common drain has only current gain but no voltage gain but common gate has voltage gain but no current gains so because the current is constant between input and output so this is one very important property of common gate amplifiers <laughs> yes uh, anyhow so we all know what common gate amplifier is and if we drive a common gate amplifier with a common source amplifier what we get is a cascode amplifier this is also a very basic amplifier which everybody knows from basic electronics so driving a common gate with a common source is a common is a cascode amplifier so this is the best way of looking at cascode amplifier cascode amplifier is basically a two-stage amplifier that's another way of looking at it so a common source stage driving a common gate stage that's another way of looking at a cascode amplifier so the benefit of cascode amplifier is uh, that it gives the benefit of uh, uh, it, it uh, removes a problem in the common source amplifier but by this I mean that one of the problem with the common source amplifier is that the isolation is less because any signal at the gate which is amplified and appears at a drain so there is a the isolation is reduced and the, it has stability problems uh, feed through and other problems so when we put a common gate amplifier in front of a common source amplifier and take the output from the drain of a common gate amplifier the input at the the, the input at the gate and the output at the drain are decoupled because of the additional transistor which is m2 as shown in the figure so th this is one of the very important property of uh, uh, cascode amplifier but at the same time uh, we reduce the voltage headroom this is the price we pay for cascode amplifiers all, all, also you can look at literature how we size the two devices what are the trade-offs uh, i will not go into those things but i just mentioned the two important aspects uh, of the cascode amplifier here so 
basically the stack amplifier is a cascode amplifier there is nothing special about it except some differences which we will talk in some moment so if you understand the cascode amplifier very well basically you understand the stack amplifier also very well so please go into the theory of cascode amplifier to really understand what exactly uh, uh, how to design exactly a stacked uh, rf power amplifiers so now we see the stack power amplifier so stack power amplifiers are also used in literature they are used in analog ic design they are used in current mirrors and other applications so again this is uh, a cascode amplifier with multiple uh, transistors stacked on top of each other again what will be the benefit and what will be the uh, trade-off what will be the what will be the negative point which you will get it's all obvious the more transistor we stack the less headroom we get but at the same time we get very good uh, uh, very good voltage swing we get higher gain we can manipulate the impedances as we like this is also very important so as you can see as we go up to the stack the impedances are changing again you can look at the theory how the impedance change how uh, those impedances are derived but basically we can use these changing impedances from the bottom to the top to do impedance matching in power amplifier so impedance matching is also extremely extremely important aspect of power amplifier so if we are able to design a stack amplifier that gives us voltage gain and gives us the required power and at the end of the day we are able to match it directly to 50 ohms we have basically got rid of the load transformation network which occurs in every power amplifier so this is a very very big benefit which we get from stack amplifier and this is the fundamental and perhaps the only reason apart from other reason let's say but this is the main main reason why stack amplifier are used at microwave frequencies that you effectively get rid of the load transformation network you effectively get rid of the inductors capacitances transformers everything you directly connect the output of a stacked amplifier to the 50 ohm load again you might find in literature some paper which use some sort of impedance matching network at the output and the 50 ohm line but that but uh, but the transformation ratio of this will be very low and the losses will be correspondingly very low so this is the fundamental benefit the stacked amplifier is used in microwave frequencies in 28 gigahertz band and at other frequencies so uh, what other differences are, are, are there in stacked amplifiers so in stacked amplifier another very important difference is as compared to commonly used stacked amplifier in in analog design is that we give the swing there is a swing present at the gate of the stack devices a pure stacked analog power amplifier does not have voltage swing at the gates of the uh, stack transistors but in rf stack power amplifier definition and design we give a swing at those devices so what is the benefit of this giving uh, ac signal to the stack devices gates and what is the trade off there the benefit which we get when we give us input signal at the gate of the stack devices is the fact that basically what what you are doing is uh, you are able to cancel the parasitics as the inductive parasitics the capacitive parasitic which are very prominent at microwave and millimeter wave frequencies so you are basically cancelling those uh, parasitics and what is the drawback you get again it's very obvious when you have a swing with when you deliver an extra rf power to certain nodes in the circuit you are losing some power so there is a very delicate balance between how much signal should appear at the gate of the stack devices and how much cancellation you are getting in case you are getting less cancellation of those parasitic effects you are losing you, you have not designed the stack correctly conversely if you are giving an input signal to the gate of the stack device and you are able to cancel the parasitics then you are getting benefit another way of looking at uh, cancelling the parasitic concept is that you are basically doing another form of impedance matching between different nodes in the circuit right so this is what RF stack amplifier definition is that it is a stack amplifier like an analog stack amplifier the only difference is that you are giving an input signal at the gate of the amplifier 
and this is the reason this stack amplifier has got a lot of attention and you can see a lot of publication in ISSCC, GSSCC, MTT transactions, uh, TCAS and other uh, and even in products you can see this stack amplifier particularly promoted in 28 gigahertz, 60 gigahertz and other important 5G and perhaps in 6G band. So this is the reason the concept is not old the concept is not new sorry the concept is very old it's just the nature of this amplifier which has got a lot of attention and people have made combinations of uh, stacked amplifier in Dorothy configuration and in um, other configurations so i think it's clear it starts from common gate amplifier then it goes to cascode amplifier then we get stacked amplifier analog stacked amplifier which i may call it then we get the rf stacked amplifiers and right so this is the fundamental concept and this is limited by the voltage headroom so let's go further so now i will uh, again summarize those facts again it is good for stability you eliminate the load transformation network and uh, the stack the ground of the stack devices is not rf grounded there is a signal there which i discussed earlier uh, implementation wise it's good to implement this uh, implement this uh, Amplifier in SOI technology, which is which has uh, reduced substrate capacitance, so you save a lot of RF energy there. You prevent losses at the substrate. By CMOS also possible, and uh, and you have better control if when you manufacture this amplifier and uh, there is a variation due to manufacturability. You have better control to tune the parasitic, so it gives you an extra level of freedom at the same time this extra level of freedom comes at the uh, extra complexity involved right so these are the prices you pay for the benefits you get so uh, one can have different combination of stack amplifier common source common gate com uh, combinations to get additional benefits uh, one can think about this and uh, yes that's all uh, sorry for a spelling mistake here yeah, so this is one stack amplifier from literature, uh, I showed pictures, so uh, as you can see this is, uh, the front, uh, this is a very basic picture of it, so this is how the stack amplifier is, you have a bottom main device, a common source device, and then all devices are in parallel. This is another way of look at it, and this is another schematic where he is distributing the power through transformers. He is uh, distributing the writer is distributing the power through transformer, so he is giving the input signal here. Part of the input signal goes here, here, here. So he is feeding from the top, and the signal is going to the bottom. This is another way of feeding the stack amplifier. Again, I was telling you these are different combinations. These are all different combinations. One can think of a lot of combination how we can make it. So he is giving a signal here. Then that signal is divided between this stack and this stack and then it goes down here in this way and so forth. You, you can clearly see the differences between them. So here he is using common source, common gate, common gate, common gate. Here he is using cascode, 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 cascode and again he is feeding them in a different way. For example here he is feeding the top cascode here then it is feeding here and then a big portion, a half portion is going to this tag, this tag. You, you can clearly see it depends upon upon the ingenuity of the engineer, how he designed it, how he find the trade-offs in the technology and uh, what's uh, the benefit he is willing to get and what benefits he is willing to sacrifice. So, you know, you can clearly see the differences. So, th this they call it N-stack CS cells. This is uh, called N-stack cascode cells. This is called N parallel CS cells. Like, again, so these are not really, uh, sorry, these are not really common gate these are common source amplifier it, it just depends upon you how you design it how your technology is offering you benefits and uh, trade off you first have to carefully look at your devices this is a fundamental way you have to carefully look at this layout its parasitics and then design which topology is better even these topologies shown here might not be better at all you might find out there is another totally different type of stack topology is better for you and this is uh, N stack common gate transistor. So he is here. He is saying that uh, yeah. So he is like just common gate device. There is no AC signal appearing as I can see from this figure. It is just a common source device and this uh, just N stack common. This is standard stack. And as we go up in the stack, as I mentioned, the impedance is keep getting transformed, transformed, transformed based on the formulas. And at the end of the day, 
you can match it directly to the load save get rid of the load network and get high power at microwave frequencies so so i hope uh, this recording was beneficial for understanding the basic concept of stacked amplifiers and uh, i hope when you design this amplifier it will be easier for you for some of the tips uh, mentioned in this tutorial thank you very much